Alleluia, glory, glory. Here, Mokorunda, Mokorunda, Manka, Shiki, Tender, Mokotunda, Manka, Kakotor, Mokorunda, Makashinda. Alleluia, Here, Mokorunda, Mokoshiki, Manka, Tande, Kakeke, Mokorunda, Mokorunda, Manka, Shiki, Manka, Tunde. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Rakisha Mokorunde Keremokotunda. Ora Mokoshata. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship.
The Lord asked me to tell you that all the cases that requires a second touch will receive it tonight. Oh, thank you, Father. Daddy asked me to tell you. He says, I am the Lord, I change not. And what I have promised you, I will do. Oh, thank you, my Lord. He asked me to tell someone. He said, that which is causing you sorrow, my fire will consume. Rakushantura <laughs> Daddy asked me to tell you. He said, while Abraham and Isaac were climbing the mountain on one side, a ram was climbing the mountain on the other side. The Lord says, before this night is out, your help will arrive. Oh, Ramoko Shake. Ekeke Runde Ramoko Shake Runde Ramaka Katunde Ramoko Runde Keremoko Shake Mante. Ekeke Ramoko Runde Ramoko Shake Ramoko Tenda. Ah, thank you, Father. And he asked me to tell you, take note of this date. Because one day, you will look back and say, that the day that the turnaround began for me. Thank you, Father. I have a Father, Almighty Father. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. I have a Father. Hallelujah. I have a Father. Hallelujah. Almighty Father. Peace, King of peace, Lord of Lords, I am a Father. Oh Lord, the Lord asked me to tell someone the best way to describe your situation is that your hands had withered. He asked me to tell you, your hands will be fully restored tonight. <laughs> and that he says, I should remind you of what happened in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. It's the story of the lame man by the beautiful gate. 
all his life all his life he had been held down by a force that he could do nothing about but then his day came and he touched from the hand of the servant of the living God destroyed the yoke that was binding him down and he got up jumping leaping praising God daddy asked me to tell someone before the end of this month you'll be jumping you'll be leaping you'll be praising God oh thank you father and he said just tell them that before this month is over every member of your congregation will say concerning you the Lord has done great things for me. Thank you, my Father. Glory be to your holy name. Do what you alone can do. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let somebody shout hallelujah. When I shake hands with one or two people and say, I believe God has touched me already. What about you? And then you may please be seated except those who are children of April. If you are born in April, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> my Father, my God, I'm committing your children born in the month of April into your hands. April is the fourth month of the year. Four stands for the four corners of the world. And so, Lord God Almighty, I'm praying concerning this, your children, that from the four corners of the earth, you will send help to your children. From the east, send help to them. From the west, send help to them. From the north, send help to them. From the south, send help to them. And from heaven above, Lord, send help to them. If this is their new year, my Father and my God, do new things. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Ah, let somebody shout a big, big hallelujah. Um, by the grace of God, next month we will be dealing with wonderful part five and we'll be talking about the everlasting arm the everlasting arms of God. Now, quickly, we're going to be very brief tonight because this is a children's program. Um, 
First of all, I want to bring you greetings from your brothers in Malawi. Um, we were with them some days ago, and the Almighty God moved very mightily, and the brethren were very, very warm. They received us very, very well. And the Almighty God moved mightily. So they send their greetings to you. And I promised them that I would deliver the message. So greetings from Malawi. Secondly, I, have, I can tell you with all certainty that during the earthquakes in Turkey, none of our members died. Not a single one. It's a mighty miracle. Because some of our churches were in the very section where the earthquake took place. Now we have, of course, we have reached out to them as we should. But I feel that maybe I should let you know that the, there is still a lot of need there. Um, some of our churches were among those that collapsed, and so we need to rebuild, and so on and so forth. So if you feel led of God to contribute towards the work of reconstruction, particularly of our churches in Turkey, please do so. Just contact uh, my secretary or contact your pastors in your regions and uh, we'll be able to do something. If you think we ought to do something, let me hear you say amen. Very good. And then, of course, I'm sure the workers will remember that once a year we have uh, a special meeting in the month of May. So we'll be expecting that all workers will be present at the May Holy Ghost service. Mark chapter 10. From verse 13 to 16. Mark 10, from verse 13 to 16. Now, when you're opening your Bibles, what do you think of the presentations of the children and the teenagers tonight? I, I was expecting that you, the elders, would really encourage them by clapping and shouting. Because they... From the opening prayer, to the choruses, to the drama, to the worship. Oh, they were wonderful. Come on, give the Lord a big round of applause. And then, what do you think of that message? I think we should stand on our feet and give the Almighty God a round of applause. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. <laughs> I, I am not sure I can even preach a better message on that topic that I mean oh, I was overflowing with joy eh? uh, now I know that my future is doubly glorious it's usually the, the youth and the young adults who have been doing marvelously well but now the teenagers, 
Oh, God. <laughs> what a message. What a message. Told you step by step by step what the woman did to get a miracle. It told you something that is even better than a, a, a divine touch. That that's that you should go ahead and tell the world what God has done for you. I say, hey, there goes my girl. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Praise the Lord. And then that young man came here and was uh, making announcements. And uh, <laughs> now I was listening to the phonetics. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wow, as somebody we can send anywhere in the world, let show them that we can speak English in Nigeria, man. <laughs> Give the Lord a big round of applause. It's been a wonderful, wonderful evening. And that young fellow came and led us into worship and brought the Holy Spirit down. Beautiful, beautiful. And of course, the mass choir showed that they are true mothers and fathers and they crowned it off with beautiful, beautiful singing. Glory be to God. Mark chapter 10. Reading from verse 13 to 16. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. That he should do what? Touch them. That's all they ask. Just touch our children. And when that little one was leading the prayer, I said, Amen and Amen. Even though many of you don't seem to be praying as I expected, he said, Hey, God, the enemy can't touch us children if we touch our parents. Did you hear that? Let all the parents say, Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. Then she went further to say, If you touch us, Lord, we will become untouchable to the devil. Did you hear that? Ah. These children are inspired. The Holy Spirit is working mightily in them. Oh, glory be to God. Let me hear somebody shout loud and clear, Father, touch my children. And let them become untouchable to the devil. They brought young children to him that he should touch them. That's all they were asking for. Touch our children. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. Hey, God have mercy on the disciples. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. And said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms. 
he took them up in his arms. How many of you are small enough for God to carry you? Huh? Then let me hear you. Lift your hand and shout hallelujah. You know, the problem with many of us is that we are too big for God to carry. We have become too big. Too big to dance for him. Too big to shout. Too big to clap. Too big to... And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. May the Almighty God bless all of us tonight. The value of a touch, like I shared with those of you who came to the Holy Communion yesterday, depends on who is doing the touching. All hands are not the same. Not at all. In Exodus chapter 17, from verse 8 to 14, Exodus 17, 8 to 14, when the Amalekites came to attack the children of Israel, Moses went to the hilltop. Aaron and Hall went with him. And he told Joshua to be, to be fighting in the valley below. You know the story. As long as Moses' hands were up, the children of Israel were winning. But when he became tired and his hands were coming down, the battle turned. Aaron and Hall saw what was happening. They threw hard hands. Even the two of them were ministers. But they knew that the hands of Moses are <laughs> not ordinary hands. So they sat him down. They got him a comfortable seat and lifted his hands. One was carrying one hand on this side, the other was carrying another hand on the other side. Why didn't they say, hey, okay, Moses, rest. Your hands are true. Our own hands combined with the four. We will raise our four hands. They would have lost the battle. Today I lift my hand to the Almighty God on your behalf. And I say you will win all your battles. <clears throat> According to Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9, Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9, some hands can transmit power. Joshua the son of Noah was full of the spirit of wisdom. Why? Because Moses had laid his hands on him. It wasn't an ordinary hand that landed on the head of Joshua. It was the miracle walking hands of Moses. I'm saying with all humility, you are blessed. Because it has pleased the Almighty God to make the hands of your Father in the Lord special hands. I'm not boasting. It's not by my ability, it's not by my education or anything, it's just by His grace. 
But by the special grace of God, these hands are special hands. And God will prove it to you tonight. Some of you will remember the story. Don't worry if the introduction is long, it means the sermon will be short. <laughs> because we don't want to preach long tonight. God is already here. I went to Malaysia. And the members of our churches over there, many of them were at the airport to receive me. There were many. And so the only thing I could do was enter into the car. And then as they were driving me, they were wound down the window and raised my hand and I was waving to them. That one man was maybe a bit cleverer than the others. Somehow he lunged forward and his hand brushed my hand. He was excited. He had a child that was born lame. The child had been lame for, I think, for about five years. When he got to me, he said, Hey, I touched his hand. Hey, you boy, come. Lay his hand on the boy. He said, I command you, walk. And uh, nothing happened. He said, sorry, oh, it looks as if my faith is not enough. So very sadly, he turned to walk out of the room. And then suddenly he had a sound behind him. The child was following. Everything that is lame in your life. We walk today. <laughs> now, be, be, because of who God is, His touch can have various effects. For example, the bread that Jesus touched was multiplied. You know the story? John chapter 6, from verse 5 to 30. John 6, 5 to 30. He took five loaves of bread and two fishes, gave thanks, broke them, and fed 5,000. And there was still three baskets left over. He touched the bread. Because the one who did the touching is the one called the all-sufficient one. The one who did the touching is the one who said, I am the bread of life. Ah, God is going to touch somebody tonight. Because God is love, when he touches, it is a touch of love. Uh, maybe I'll explain that one very quickly. A child will be crying. And you, you pick up the child. And you begin to dance with the child. And the child keeps crying. But the mother comes, takes the child, and the child stops crying immediately. Why? Even a child can feel the touch of love. The touch of love of the mother is different from that of any, any stranger. When God touches you with his hand of love, your, 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 
entire system becomes cool down. Comfort comes. What is causing you crying seems to vanish away. Ah, today, God will touch somebody with the hand of love. Now, because God is also fire. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Hebrews 12, verse 29. The Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. So when he touches, it could be a touch of fire. Like in Judges chapter 15, from verse 14 to 15, Judges 15 from verse 14 to 15, when they brought Samson bound to the Philistines, and the enemies were already rejoicing, hey, we got him. The Bible says, God touched them. You know, the, God is the Holy Spirit. And the ropes that were binding him, the Bible said, were burnt as if they have come in contact with fire. <laughs> you know, God says that you, you should write down today. Because every yoke in your life will be destroyed tonight. And because the yokes were destroyed, in the life of Samson, you know the rest of the story. The enemies, the external enemies that had surrounded him, thinking, ah, we got him now. They were destroyed. Those who didn't die fled. In the name of the one who is called the consuming fire. All those who have plotted your destruction, fire will consume them. Uh, that reminds me of the story of one of my sons. Was, was never able to share his uh, testimony publicly because he was in the military at that time. He's retired now. And some officers, senior officers, plotted against him because he wasn't playing ball. I can't go to details. And so they decided that they would arrange for his early retirement. And he came to the Holy Ghost service. We were in the first auditorium. It's a long time ago now. And God said, All who have gathered together against you shall be scattered because of you. The word came on Friday. And one thing led to another. And all the officers who attended that meeting were dismissed. And my son, who was going to be destroyed, rose to fill the highest post. I am believing God that he will do it again. When God touches you with his hand of fire, external enemies will be destroyed. And eternal enemies will be disappointed. You know, it, it, it was the relatives of something that bound him and handed him over 
to the Philistines. It was the enemy within that had handed him over to the enemies without. You know, Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 36, Matthew 10, verse 36, he said, A man's foe shall be there of his own household. And occasionally you, 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 you don't even know how to pray concerning some of these people who are very, very close to you. Some of the people you are feeding, some of the people you are clothing, some of the people you are helping. And yet they are plotting your downfall. And you don't even know how to pray. Because if you ask God to kill them, you are the one who have to bear the expenses of burying them. <laughs> and God has a thousand ways where you don't have one. And so I'm going to pray. And the prayer will be this. Father, concerning all your children here today, and all those who are listening to us. Prepare a table before them in the presence of their enemies. <laughs> Thank you, my father. Daddy says, Concerning someone, he said, I have heard your silent cry. He said, By April next year, your children will be among the ones here. Now, God is life. So when he touches, his touch can produce life. In Luke chapter 7 from verse 11 to 15, Luke 7 from verse 11 to 15, you remember the story in the city of Nain that a widow was going to bury her only son. And Jesus came in and touched the coffin and everything changed the dead came back to life sorrow changed to joy the journey to the grave became a journey back home journey of despair became a joy of a, a journey of rejoicing i don't know who god is talking to but by next month you will come back rejoicing god is light so he can touch you with light his touch can produce light. In John chapter 9, you read it from verse 1 to 7. John 9, 1 to 7. Who was the man who was born blind? He touched him. And the one who had been in darkness all the days of his life suddenly came into light. You know, there are many of us who up to this moment are groping in the dark. You may not be blind physically, but you are still waiting for that thing you need to know that will transform your life completely. You know, it, it, it takes only one breakthrough to change a man's life forever. 
There are several people who are supposed to be tailors. But they are opening Babin Saloon. He's saying scissors is scissors. Oh. I know at least one of my son. He's a medical doctor. May the Almighty God open his eyes one day that no, 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 I did not send you into the world to be a medical doctor. I sent you into the world to be an accountant. <laughs> Today, he can pay the salary of a hundred doctors. There is a door waiting for you to enter into. If only you can see it. Today in the name that's above every other name, he will touch you. Your eyes will open. And you will discuss, you will discover the purpose for your life. Ah. I'm trying to see which one I can jump so that uh, we can finish quickly because we don't want the children to fall asleep before it is their turn. Let's take this one. God is the all-sufficient one. Genesis 17, verse 1. The God who is more than enough. And that means a touch from him can take care of all your needs. Like the story my daughter used in her summer. Just a touch. And she gave a marvelous definition of what is a touch. Just an extension from one fellow to the other. And say, yes, ma, thank you. <laughs> that lady was sick. A touch healed her. Huh? She was barren because she couldn't be pregnant because of what was happening. He touched, solved that problem. She was like somebody who is under a curse. Because in those days, when a woman is doing her period, she's not even allowed to come into the church. A touch solved the problem. She was growing poorer by the day. A touch solved that problem. She was almost completely hopeless. All the doctors have failed her. A touch solved that problem. Just one touch. I don't know what are your problems. If it is physical, God will touch you today. When I was praying for uh, the prayer warriors who normally pray overnight on Thursday, when I was praying for them by 3 a.m., some of you don't know, I go to pray for them when they want to round up. You know, I do so. <laughs> My request for them, I want to extend it to you. I said, Father, touch them physically and make them whole. Touch them materially and prosper them. Touch them spiritually and make them free. Touch them spiritually and empower them to do miracles. All you need is a single touch. And you will get it tonight. 
Uh, it shows you didn't believe me. Let me put it this way. God will touch somebody tonight. Uh, and that somebody will be the one who says man is the loudest. <laughs> and then let me conclude the way my daughter concluded. She referred to things that could hinder your touch. Discouragement. You've made up your mind. Well, it's too late. You can't do anything about my case. He said, no, 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 you have to get out of that one. I said, yes, ma, thank you. Then he said, you have to seek after God. You have to get up and go. And then she mentioned something at the very end. And he said, one of the biggest obstacles to your receiving a touch from God is sin. And he quoted the Bible passage. Is there is in my note? <laughs> When she was coaching it, I said, is that so? You made this girl saw my note. The Holy Spirit must have showed it to her. I saw 59. From verse 1 to 2. I saw 59, 1 to 2. It says clearly, clearly, the hand of the Lord is not shortened. That's why next month we'll be talking more about the everlasting arms. His hand is not shortened that he cannot see. Neither is there heavy that he cannot hear. But your sin can separate between you and him. I've given the illustration before. If you have a piece of wire, or two pieces of wire, one wire on the left, one on the right, one is carrying high voltage electricity the other is carrying nothing if you look at the two with ordinary eyes you can see the difference they just look alike it is when you touch both of them that you will know as a matter of fact if you touch the one that is carrying electricity you will not be alive to tell the story. But no matter how powerful the current that is flowing in a piece of wire, if we wrap rubber around it, we call the rubber insulator. If there is an insulator around that wire, no matter how powerful the current in there, a child can play with it. Why? because the rubber will not allow the electric power to penetrate through. Sin is an insulator. Even if God wants to touch you and the insulator is there, nothing will happen. That's why you have to get rid of sin. That's why I keep crying every day be holy that's why I said long time ago the master key to success is holiness that's why you must give your life to Jesus Christ and let his blood wash away your sin because until your sins are washed away The mighty power in the hands of the Almighty cannot penetrate you to you. So very quickly, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, if you want that blood to wash you clean, come, come to the altar now 
Uh, I know some of you are very, very far away. So I'm going to count up to 15. Before I say 15, if you want to give your life to Jesus, if you want his blood to wash away your sin, come and stand before the altar. We will pray for the salvation of your soul. And then the hand of the Almighty God will reach out to you, touch you, and all your problems will be dealt with by his mighty hand. So I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. The insulator must be removed before the power of God can flow through to you. Four. And that insulator is sin. The solution is the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sins. Holy come to him. Five. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. God is going to touch your hands today. And your hands will begin to transmit power. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Thirteen. Thank you, counselors. Begin to move in now. In the old auditorium, counselors begin to move in. Fourteen. I can see, see some of you see far away. Just keep coming, keep coming. Don't stop. I know you are coming from a long distance. Just keep coming. But those of you already in front, begin to pray. Call on the Almighty God. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. 
Let your blood remove every obstruction to your touch in my life. Let your blood wash away my sins. I want to become a child of God. Let your blood wash me clean, Lord. Wash me clean. Wash away my sins. Save my soul. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Take over my life completely. And I will do your will for as long as I live. Talk to God. And those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and pray for them. And pray that the Almighty God will have mercy on them. That God will save their souls. That He will forgive all their sins. Pray for them, brethren. Those of you on the way, keep coming, keep coming. You have only one minute left to get to the front. Yeah, I see you. Now wait for one more minute for you. You must give your life to Jesus so that his blood will wash away your sins. Pray as you come, those of you on the way. Make sure you get here before I finish praying because I must pray now. Keep coming, keep coming. Don't wait. I know you've traveled a long distance, so keep coming. Call on Jesus. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to wash you clean with his powerful blood. Promise him that you will serve him for the rest of your life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have decided to surrender their life to you. Please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They have come to you now. Father, please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash them clean. Please write their names in the book of life. Let them become true children of the living God. And please, Lord, whenever they cry unto you, answer them by fire. And when you are touching people tonight, please touch them also. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.